All right, guys, here's the video for 3.3, slope intercept form. Remember, we want to know the slope and we want to know the y-intercept. Those are the two pieces of information we need to know in order to create the equation of a line. So let's review that really quick so we can understand the formula for it, the, the, the right way to write it. So there's two ways to write the equation of a line. There's two ways. I can either do in slope intercept form, which is what we're learning right now, and then later we'll learn the point slope form. Okay, so let's worry about the slope intercept form because that's this video right now. And then later check out the video 3.4. Okay, so it's exactly what it says. This is the slope and we call it intercept, but we're referring to the y-intercept form. Okay, we want it in this form, and in this form we have to know the slope. That we use the letter m for slope, and we use the letter b for y-intercept. And the equation of a line, it says equation, so we have to have the equal sign. It's y equals the slope times the x value plus the y-intercept, which is b. And that is always the form that we're going to be writing on. The m is the slope, and that's the value that always multiply the x. Now, remember what I talked about slope. This slope can be positive, okay? It can be negative, that's okay. And it also can be zero. But it cannot never, I'm going to write zero in words, zero. Okay, so it can be positive, it can be negative, it can be zero. We do not write equations of a line with the undefined slope, okay? We can't do that. There's a, that is a special case. But it can be positive, negative, or zero. So let's practice, and this is the main equation right here, is the slope and y-intercept form we're going to be using it every single time. So I wrote a few examples, and I'm always going to refer to our equation, which is the slope y-intercept form. I'm going to write it nicely right here, y equals m times x plus the b. And that b can be positive, can be negative, and it can be zero. So it doesn't matter. We will take, we will write it however it, it, it is given, okay? All right, so this is the easier case when they give us the slope and they give us the y-intercept. So you're just replacing the m value with a 5 and you're replacing the b value with a negative 2. It's pretty much just replacing the values in the formula. So the formula, if I was solving this and this was given to me on the homework, I would do, well, the answer for this is y equals, I'm writing an equation, m, which is my 5, times the x, and plus the b, but the b is negative, so I'm going to write minus 2. Okay? So all this information is given to us. We're not doing any calculation whatsoever here. Okay, let's do it one more time. Given the slope, it's negative 1 and the b equals zero. So my equation is y equals my slope, which is a negative one, negative one times the x plus the zero. But we can clean this up a little bit. We don't need to write the negative one. We can write y equals negative x, and I don't have to write the plus zero. So this is correct, but this is the cleaned up version. We don't need to write a plus zero. They're both correct. But this is the more, more elegant and more correct way to write it, okay? We don't need to say I have $5 plus zero. We don't need to write that. So it's just we don't need to add a plus zero or a minus zero. But if you do it, it's not wrong. Okay, again, given the slope, given the y-intercept, can we plug those and write in the equation? Sure can. y equals always my slope first and is a negative. 2 over 3 times the x, if you want to put a little invisible multiplication right there, times the x, minus, it's plus my b sign, my b value, but here's a negative 5, okay, my b is a negative 5. So there we go, we have our equation of a line, okay? I know this is where I'm going to be touching the y-axis, that's why it's called the y-intercept, it touches the y-axis, and this is the slope that goes, um, that takes me from one point to another. So these are the easy cases. It's just for us to get comfortable with the equation, how to write it. Okay, let's move on to a different kind of uh, type of questions they'll ask. And given the function rule, can you identify the slope and the y-intercept? So let's take a look at it here. They gave us the equation. They want us to identify what m is and what b is. Can we identify that? 
m is always the value that multiplies the x. So take a look at over here, we have a 2. And the value that has been added in the back, right here, is a positive 1. So there we go. Okay. So take a look at these other problems. I would like for you to try it to identify all of the slopes, all the, the y-intercepts. Pause it and then check your answers with me. Okay. So here we go. Let's go through the answers to make sure you got them all correct. So the slope here is negative 1 half. The y-intercept is negative 3. Okay, just like it comes in the formula, the number multiplies the x is the slope, the number, the value in the back is our y-intercept. Okay, here the slope is 2 fifths, the y-intercept is 4. Here the slope is an invisible, I made it sure to show you the negative, but there's a, a invisible number 1 right there. Okay, so there's an invisible number 1, so it's a negative 1, that's the slope. Most students like to write as a fraction, negative 1 over 1. So I can go back over here and write this as 2 over 1. Some students like to see that because they like to see the rise over run, the drop here because it's a negative. So we drop and run 2, drop 1, run 2. This is rise 2 and run 4. This is drop 1 and run 1. So the students like to see it as a fraction. I'm OK with it. So it's a negative 1. The y-intercept is 3. And the last one, nice and simple over here, is again an invisible negative 1. So the slope is negative 1 over 1, if you want to write it as a fraction. And the y-intercept is, there's nothing being added or subtracted, so it's 0. Okay. So if you see this, the reason why we need to be good at recognizing this is because now I know that if I have a graph, and I'm going to do a little one right here for the first one. If I have a graph, and this is my y-axis, okay, this is my y-axis, and this is my x-axis. If I go to the initial point, this y-intercept, I know I need to go to y equals 1. Let's mark it right here as y equals 1. I know this is my starting point, okay? And from there, all I need to do is count the slope. Because 2 is positive, I'm going to rise to 1, 2, rise 2 more than where I started, and then run 1 to the right. Okay, let's pretend that is right here. So there we go. We have two points. I can do more points if I want. I always keep counting the same slope. Rise 2 more, run 1 more. And you can do this infinitely many times, and you would get your line. I would be able to graph it. So identifying these two pieces of information is so important because I can go ahead and graph it. And we can also work backwards from the graph. We can see the y-intercept. We can see the slope. We can write the equation. That is the skills that we are trying to teach you here, is how to go from one step to another and also be able to work backwards. Okay? Let's do another one right here. Let's do this, this third one right here. I have my y-axis, my up and down axes, this is my y-axis, and my x-axis, x-axis, oh, ran out of room there, okay? I need to go to my starting point, which is in the y-axis, this is why it's called the y-intercept. I'm going to go to 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. That's my starting point, okay? Let me put it black there so you can see. That's my starting point. From there, we need to create another point. And the way to do that is to use our slope. It says rise 2, okay? So from 4, I'm going to rise 2 more. But then I need to run positive 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This would be at 5. There we go, okay? So I have two points, and if I had more room, I would go up two more and five more, but that's enough. Two points is enough for me to draw, connect these two values, and draw my line. Okay? So this is always, you can call it, this guy right here is our starting, starting point. Okay? You can call that the starting point, and this is our slope. Okay, slope. So that's how we go from one point to another, all right? So let's do another kind where we go from the graph to the equation. Let's see, where do I have that? Right here. From the graphs 
to the equation. So given the graph, identify the slope, the y-intercept, and write the rule, write the equation. Remember, our goal is to write y equals m times x plus b. So the b is our y-intercept. So let's recognize what is b and what is the slope. Okay, because once we have those two pieces of information, we can write the equation. So b is our value of 3. So there we go. I know that that's my b value. The slope is how do I go from 3 to this other given point right here, which is 1, 1. Well, let's take a look at it. Well, I would have to drop two values. So I'm going to write it down, drop two. And I would have to run to the right one value. So it's drop two, run one. So this is my drop. This was my run. OK? So I drop two, run one. There we go. I have everything I need to write the equation. So I would write y equals the slope, right here, m, which is my negative 2. Negative 2 times the x, and then we tuck all the back, we, we just write in the back the b value, which is a positive 3. Okay? All right, let's do one more. We always want to know what is the b value and what is the m value, okay, the slope. The b value is the point on the y-axis. There we go. It's a negative 2. Okay, it's a negative 2. Now, how do I go from here to the point here? Well, let's see. I would have to, instead of dropping like I did here, I would have to rise 1, 2. Rising means it's a positive value, so I went up 2. And let's see how many I have to run. I went up 2, but I have to run 1, 2, 3. I would have to run 3 to get to my next point, okay? So notice I went up 2, so that's why it's positive 2, and I ran 3. Notice that here I had to drop 2, that's why it was negative 2, okay? So now I have the two pieces of information, it's just a matter of writing in the right location. y equals m comes first, which is 2 thirds times the x, and on the back I put my b value, which is negative 2. Okay? All right, I want you to try this one. This one is very, very tricky, and that's why I put it here. Most students, they memorize this, okay? I am here at zero, and here's negative one, and he, oh, I'm sorry, this is positive one, this is positive two, this is my x axis, and this is my y axis, okay? This is my y axis. So, most of the students, um, they memorize how to write this, this equation right here. All right, so let's go ahead and do um, what we know. Let's find the y-intercept, which is b, and then we find the slope. Well, the b value is 2, all right? That's the b value. But the slope is like, I'm not rising anywhere, I'm not dropping anywhere, I'm just running. There is no rise, I'm just running. So... You can say there is no rise, but I am running to left and right. It really doesn't matter. I can run to here, to the front, the, the number one. I can run to the number two. I can run to any of these spots over here, but there is no rise. And I can run one. And zero divided by one is zero. So there is no slope here. That's why the slope for this is called the zero slope. Okay. So we got b equals two. That's my value on the y-axis, but I have a zero slope. If I was to write the equation, I would write y equals zero times x, and my b value is positive two. But obviously, that is not clean, because zero times any number is zero. So this would completely be zero. So our equation is y equals two. Most of the students don't, don't even waste time writing all this. They already know any horizontal line, the slope is 0, so it's just y equals 2. If that line was at, at 4, okay, if I had a line at 4, the, the equation for that would be y equals 4 because the slope is 0. Okay, so it would happen here in this case. All right, let's take a look at one more from the graph identify the b value, which is our y-intercept, and then identify the slope. How do I go from one point to another? Now remember, all of these graphs 
I read from left to right. I went from this higher point to the lower point. From this lower point to the higher point. From left to right. I would do exactly the same thing in all of them. From left to right. From left to right. Okay? It looks like this line is decreasing. So I know my answer for the slope will be negative. Because I keep going lower and lower and lower. Okay? All right. So let's pick the y-intercept first, which is negative 2. I keep switching pen. Negative 2 is my y-intercept. Okay? Now the slope, don't count backwards. How do you go from here to a higher point? We always read it from left to right. If you notice my example, I went from left to right, from left to right, left to right. Okay? So from this point over here, I am at negative 2 comma 0. It looks like I would have to drop 1 and drop 2. So I would have to drop 2. Let me show that here. I would have to drop 1 and then drop 2, drop 2. But I will also have to run 1 and then run 2. There we go. So my slope is drop 2, run 2. And negative 2 divided by a 2 is negative 1. Some people like to write 1 over 1. So this is just from left to right, just like we did all of them, from left to right. So now I have my slope and I have my y-intercept. Y equals, the slope is negative 1, you can write negative 1 or you can leave it invisible, times the x, and the y-intercept is negative 2. Okay? So I was, I'm hoping that you can see that I always read the graph from left to right. From left to right. I don't go backwards. I don't go from right to the point before. Okay? Always moving forward from left to right. So we did it in various ways, how to find how to write the equation in um, in the slope y intercept form. Okay, we did it from given information, we did it from graph. And let's see if I have one more example here. I do. I have can I write the equation from coordinate pairs? If two points are given, a x1 and a y1, and then a x2 and a y2. Well, to write the y equals mx plus b, I want the slope m. And the slope formula, m equals, it's y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. Is the difference in the y values over the difference in the x values. So I'm going to do that here, okay? So I'm going to first find the slope. So the slope is, it helps you a lot for you to label the values. This is going to be my first point, x1, and this is y1. So these are the first points. These are going to be the second points, x2 and y2. So now that I know that's labeled, and I give you guys the formula, is just plugging in the right, the right spot. Another thing I tell you to remember is that a negative times a negative is always a positive. So remember this little piece of information. Okay, a negative times a negative is always a positive. So those are the things that you need to always remember. Let's go ahead and use the formula. y2 minus y1. y2 is 0 minus y1, which is also 0. 0 minus 0 divided by x2 is negative 3, minus, which is part of my formula, a positive 3. While 0 minus 0 is 0, divided by negative 3 with negative 3 is negative 6. So the answer for here is 0. Okay? So the equation for this line will have the slope of 0. Okay? So I already know the slope is 0. It will be similar, it will be definitely similar to this case over here. It will be one of this kind of horizontal lines. We just have to know, well, where is the horizontal line? What is the y-intercept of that horizontal line? So we just pick any number we want, either the first point or the second point, and we plug it in the equation y equals mx plus b. So we can solve it for b. Okay. So I'm going to pick 3 comma 0 just to see what happens. 3 is the x value. 3 is the x value. 0 is the y value. And my slope is 0. So here we go, 0, plus the b value. All right, so let's go ahead and just clean up. 0 equals 
0 times 3 is 0 plus b. Well, there's a number b plus 0 that equals 0. Well, what do you think that number would be? Okay, if I subtract 0 from both sides, I get 0 equals b. b is the 0, the zero value. Okay, so in other words, if I was to draw the graph, this graph would be this line right here. Okay, this is the y axis. This is the x axis. The, y, the b is 0, that means it's right here at 0. My line would be the one right on the top of the x axis. It would actually be the line that forms the x axis. Okay, and there's no slope, the slope is 0. All right. I know this one was very confusing. It's one of the questions that was asked in class, and that's why I'm doing it on the video. Because I know that when you get a zero, what do you do? You just stop? No, you still got to figure out what your B value is. It just tells me that this is a horizontal line. All right, one more time. We're going to use the same steps. We're going to use our, our slope formula. I'm going to label this x1 and this y1. I'm going to label this x2 and this is y2. Okay, so here we go. Well, let's find the slope first. y2, which is 14, minus y1, which is 12, all over 13, which is our x2, minus our 10, which is our x1. So 14 minus 12 is 2, and 13 minus 3 is 10. So there we go. I have my slope of 2 thirds. I don't have the B value, and that's what we were trying to find out here in this case. So we use the equation Y equals MX plus B. We plug in Y value, X value, and the slope value, and we try to solve for B. So which X and Y value would you like to pick? To me, it doesn't matter. You can either pick this first two here or this second one. Pick a, a, a coordinate pair and, and solve it. So I'm going to go with 10, 12, okay? 10 is my x value, so I'm going to replace the x with the 10. I'm going to replace the y value with the 12, and I'm going to plug in the rest of the information. 2 thirds, so 2 thirds right here, times the 10 plus the b value, okay? I know it's fractions, and the student hate, students hate work with it, working with fractions, but we can, we can do it. So I have 12 equals 2 times 10 is 20 over 3 plus the b value. If I subtract 20 over 3 from here and subtract 20 over 3 from here, this is 0. I got my b value all by itself on this side. Now I just have to do what is 12 minus 20 over 3. Well, we have to go ahead and get common denominators to be able to solve for this. If you multiply this, there's a 12 over 1. If you multiply both of them by 3, top and bottom by 3, we'll be able to make common denominator. 12 times 3 is, let me continue over here, is 36 over 3 minus 20 over 3 equals my B. Then, all I have to do is, what is 36 minus 20? That is 16 divided by 3 which equals B. And we can leave it this way. That's our B value right here. Um, and we are done with our B value, and we have our M value. Now I can write the equation. Y equals my slope, which is 2 thirds, times the X, plus my B value of 16 over 3. Okay. So there you go. That's the equation. Both of these problems were very, very difficult, but the steps are always the same. Find the slope with the slope formula first, and then write the equation, plug in one point from the ones that were given and the slope that you found so you can solve for B. A lot of skills of solving here. The students found there's an easier way to solve this, is that they create a graph. They create a graph. They plot the point 10 comma 12, and then they use the slope to find out how do I get to the y-intercept. It's kind of like a little um, tricky way of finding the y-intercept without doing all these calculations. I'm okay with it. Whatever makes you, if you're thinking in a certain way, it does not bother me. I'm okay with it. 
So hopefully that helps you. And um, I have one more example right here. Okay. So from the coordinate pair, let's try one more time. Okay. Let's find the slope. I will label x1, y1, x2, y2. Okay, let's do it one more time. Find the slope first. 8 minus y1, which is an 8, all over a negative 2 minus a 4. As you can see, we get 8 minus h, which is 0, divided by negative 6, which is a 0. So we have a horizontal line. Immediately, I know is one of these right here. But what is it going to be? Y equals what? That's what we're trying to find out. The only way to find out is some students like to plot the value and then count the slope. But that, that's kind of hard, right? But you can also see that the Y value here is an 8. So I was at 4, 8. Uh, I'm sorry, 4 is right here. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Looks like we have a 4, 8, and we have a negative 2, negative 1, negative 2, 8. So if you just get some thinking going, you see that the line is y equals 8. Okay? So there's various ways of solving this kind of stuff, um, and it helps you. Um, just think through it. Every time I get a slope of a zero, I know I have a horizontal line. Let me see what I'm going to get here. As a matter of fact, if we go back to, I didn't notice that until now, if we go back to the previous example, we could have also have determined that from um, the y value right here. Okay. Notice that the y values were zero, and our um, once we found the slope to be zero, we also got the, the y value right here. The equation to be y equals zero. So y was zero on both points. Okay? All right, so I hope I hope this helps you. Lots of practice. And come and ask me for help. Good luck.